You know what, I'm just gonna come out and say it. We kind of suck at fighting. Like, short of literal professionals, most fights that I have ever seen usually end up with someone getting sucker punched and shutting off like my future brain chip after I have a disobedient thought. But what if we weren't bad at fighting? Hell, what if we were goddamn demigods? Well, that's where the appeal of hyperactive shonen fight choreography comes into play. I you know the ones I'm talking about. Like, I, I would show the actual shows, but... Yeah. But now, here's a question. Let's say that you want people to be able to feel like these characters. How do you translate their superhuman abilities and put them into the hands of a player? Well, you can't. Like, not perfectly anyways. Like, sure, you can on a surface level, but mechanically, it's all but impossible. Listen, we are flawed creatures. We make poor decisions under pressure, we have the reaction speeds of inebriated snails, and we tend to make flubs and errors in our execution. And, because of that, games have to be designed around human limitations. For example, say you want to give the player the ability to dodge bullets. Often, this has to be done by making the enemy telegraph that they're about to shoot in the first place. Because if you just have a dude with a gun aiming at the player and firing at random, the best we can do is guess when to dodge. Or say you want a player to be able to move absurdly fast. Well, there's a limit on how fast you can let them be before their brain is literally unable to process that they're about to run into a wall. We're just not built to perform like our favorite Naruto's or Bleach's or Vegeta's. So for me personally, I kind of just gave up on ever seeing a video game ever being able to achieve that feeling. And then I saw a title on Steam with deranged achievement icons that also happens to be the exact kind of game that I just described as not existing. Huh. Anyway, this is Yomi Hustle. Yomi Hustle, or Your Only Move is Hustle, is a game created by one man, a lad named Ivy Sly. And Ivy has made a number of other games in the past, mostly Game Jam titles like No Reservation and Defy Godwin, the latter of which was, uh, a treat to play through, thanks Ivy. Anyway, Yomi Hustle is one of the most unique and creative games I have ever played, which is honestly incredible given that it looks like it was made on an edge of sketch and is worth about as much as me. It's a game that tries to tell a cautionary tale about what happens when you give the powers of a deity to anyone with their grandma's 2002 laptop and the ability to purchase a double quarter pounder. It's also a game with a pretty damn active discord at the time of making this script. And and the first thing that I saw was Ivy himself posting a picture of this gorilla with a watermelon. Yomi Hustle visually looks like a fighting game, with a noticeable Smash Brothers influence, but the way it plays is unlike any fighting game you may have experienced. As anyone who's seen or played Yomi before will tell you, what you're looking at right now isn't actually the gameplay in real time. It's a replay of a match. This is what the actual game looks like. If you weren't expecting a game that looks like I drew it in paint one day whilst my internet was out, to have a UI that looks like it's more at home on a fucking airliner, trust me, you aren't the only one. Instead of player actions taking place in real time, Yomi Hustle actually plays more like a turn-based strategy game. Except every turn is always your turn, until you get kicked in the face. Each player is given a few seconds to make their move, shown from the move pool down here, and then once both have made and locked in their moves or time runs out, the game resumes time for just enough frames for each player's move to start up, hit, and then recover. Then it pauses and players go back to decision making. It also incorporates a number of fighting game mechanics and terminology. Things like advantage, how sooner or later you'll be able to act compared to your opponent when you're both stuck in an animation or even a burst mechanic. Which, yes, even in this meme stick game with achievement icons that look like this, I will still get upset whenever someone bursts in the middle of my combo. But despite the odd control scheme, the goal is still the same. Reduce enemy HP to zero, and you win. 
And then the game plays back the fight in real time. And it is a damn treat to watch. Yomi Hustle is a game that very clearly takes inspiration from various sources. Most of which range from the mid late 2000s to the early 2010s. Or at least I think. This is just kind of what I think Ivy may have been influenced by. So if you're watching Ivy and I'm wrong here, uh, contact me at this web zone and I will pull out the good old ball fryer. The stick figure look is almost certainly inspired by the ye olde days of Newground Stickmen fighting animations, which in of themselves were inspired by the aforementioned shonen animes and movies. See, stick figures were the perfect medium for a budding animator to express their love of animation without being expected by a publisher to make every frame look like this. So it quickly became an extremely popular animation genre back in the mid late 2000s and I have vivid memories of seeing a ton of these on Newgrounds and early YouTube. But yeah, this style also lends itself nicely towards making an indie game, especially for a single person. So it is a perfect fit for something like Yomi Hustle. Other inspirations, notably in regards to how fighting works, seem to come from Tori Bash, a game that is somewhat similar to Yomi, as evidenced by its its simple stick figure aesthetic, and even down to time being paused before resuming after players have made an action. A and this game in of itself is also batshit insane in its own right. I actually played Tori Bash a ton back in the day, so upon starting up Yomi Hustle, I noticed the similarities right away, right down to the playing back of the match after it's over. Well, actually, I say I played Tori Bash, but it's more like I treated it like a toy because I had no idea how to play the damn game without, quite literally, ripping my own fucking arms off. To be frank and earnest with you, and I'm neither of those people, you need a degree in theoretical fucking physics to play this game competently because you're controlling a ragdoll limb by limb under the effects of a physics engine. It, it takes you an entire fucking seminar just to learn how to throw a punch, and this is without dealing with interference from your opponent. When you're playing against an actual person, fights in Tori Bash often look demented. But I'm getting off topic, Yomi Hustle may have been inspired by the turn-based nature of Tori Bash, but that's where the similarities thankfully end. Uh, no slight to Tori Bash, I'm just too stupid to play it. But I think the biggest inspiration for the game would absolutely have to come from a trend of Smash Brother videos that were becoming popular around the early 2010s. TAS Fights TAS, standing for Tool Assisted Speedrun, or simply Tool Assist, was originally mainly found in speedruns. Players would play through the game with special software that slowed the game down frame by frame, allowing runners to input the exact button prompts that they want when they want. And this results in players being able to create godlike perfect speedruns that are even theoretically possible to do in real time. Though I'm putting a lot of quotation marks around theoretically there. But anyways, Falk eventually got the idea to use it for a more creative purpose. What if this sort of program was used in something like Smash Brothers and matches were played under those conditions? So that was put to the test and... Well, the rest is history, which would later become supercharged with the introduction of turbo mode mods, which removed a lot of attack restrictions, which results in the insanity that you're currently witnessing on screen. And I think looking at Yomi Hustle and these old videos side by side show what I'm talking about way better than I could ever put into words. Hell, even the fighting engine in Yomi Hustle takes inspiration from Smash. Hits inflict large amounts of knockback, there is no holding back to block, and there's even directional influence. I remember watching a lot of Task Smash back in the day. So coming across a game that emulates that style in a game that's more user friendly, not to mention faster pace compared to non-turbo Tazes, gave me just the biggest damn smile. But okay, we are 10 minutes into the fucking video, so let's actually start talking about the game. When it comes to how much content Yomi has, I will admit that it is pretty bare bones. But I would like to remind you that it's one dude making it, it's $5 or free if you want to play an older version and is so small of a game I could probably get it installed on a microchip and implant it into my fucking retina. Plus it recently got Steam Workshop support, which is probably the best thing that Ivy could have ever done. Besides, you know what it does have? The most in-depth character customization system in all of fighting games. Oh, you think I'm lying. You think that I am pointing at this game and watch looking ass video game trying to gaslight you. Oh, no, 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 no. Look at this. Full RGB customization. Outlines. Hit effects. 
particles. Y you even have 14 million fucking sliders completely dedicated to how your particles work. Lifetime, gravity, speed, fade color, fucking rotation. Uh, but Trib, isn't it a bit hyperbolic to say such a thing? I mean, look at Tekken 7, and it- No, shut up! Does Tekken 7 have a initial velocity randomness slider? Uh, what's that, no? Oh, okay, then stop talking. Okay, jokes aside, Yomi Hustle only really has one game mode. Uh, fight. <laughs> Unless you count online mode. Hell, there's not even a training mode, which is actually a feature on the store page. Uh, much less a tutorial mode. And whilst there is a helpful little, hey, tell me what the fuck these buttons are button, it doesn't cover a number of things that are also important. So, getting into the game can definitely be a learning curve, and it also doesn't help that a lot of online resources about it are... scant at best. And it's at this point where I had written and recorded a whole ass segment going over every single universal button down here, as well as mechanics, but to be quite honest, there's plenty of other creators that can help with that way better than I could, especially since, while I like Yomi, I'm not exactly striving to be the next Elucard or something, so, you know. So instead, I'm gonna recommend two notable channels for you. Yomi Learn has a number of videos in short, easy to digest formats, all going over a variety of topics such as prediction ghosts, frame data, defensive options, DI, combo structures, and actions. Your only guide to hustle is a channel with a great long form video that also goes over how to play the game, as well as a guide on robot combos if that's your thing. There's plenty of more channels and guides, but due to Yomi Hustle having a rather niche community, you really have to dig to find specifics. But those two channels should get you knee-deep into the YouTube algorithm so that you can find more yourself. Right, on to characters. Now, fair disclaimer, because I'm not at all confident enough in my competitive skills in Yomi, hell, I barely understand what the fuck a frame kill is classified as in this game, I am not going to be talking about whether these characters are good or bad, meta or trash. So don't expect an overview of gameplay or strategies, just playstyles. Also, a quick note, a new character named Mutant may or may not be out by the time you see this, but as of writing, they are not out yet, so I can't talk about them. In any game that has roles, there's always going to be the player who will pop a blood vessel in their brain if they're not the first one to be able to do something. To those people, I introduce the ninja. Their attacks have doo-doo range, but are damn fast. They have ridiculous priority, and the character themselves is a slippery little shithead. They're the rushdown archetype of the game. Equipped with by far the fastest movement speed in the game, along with the best air dash in the game, and plenty of moves that propel them in various different directions. Ninja's most unique features include the Sticky Bomb, which is an airborne command grab that forces a knockdown on the opponent, while also planting a detonatable bomb on them, granting Ninja some scary pressure and combo opportunities, Quick Slash, a blindingly fast long-range super that I can only describe as a I win neutral button, Release slash Storm Momentum, which is an extremely strange but fun special super combo that allows Ninja to immediately halt their momentum momentum, store it into a buffer, and then be able to apply that momentum back onto themselves at any time at the cost of meter. And Grapple Hook, a move that was just added at the time of scripting this, which allows Ninja to grapple onto just about anything that you could think of. And I, uh, do mean anything. It grants Ninja some amazing combo potential and can even be teleported to. Because hey, Cowboy shouldn't get all the fun tools, now should he? Speaking of, the Cowboy. Tell me something. Do you like Virgil? Do you wanna be Virgin May Cry himself? Well, good news, because he's here. And also, he's a rancher now. Cowboy has a lot of tools that you wouldn't expect his namesake to have. Mainly, dude's got a sword. Not only that, but he also has like four varieties of teleports and also time powers. The cowboy to me seems like the jack of all trades in Yomi Hustle. And while I haven't played the game competitively by any stretch, I'm pretty confident in that assessment. He's actually the character that I'd recommend trying first, as he can play just about any game plan. He does have weaknesses though. His biggest one that I noticed are that his movement options are either slow or committal. For one, he doesn't have a ground dash, he can only walk. And while his teleports are extremely fancy and have have unparalleled use in combos, they do kind of falter a bit in neutral. He does have other mobility options, such as a variety of specials, but all of them are just as committal, if not more. Some of Cowboy's unique features include a gun! 
which does just about everything you could want it to. You only get six bullets to work with, and as far as I know, they can't be regained, no matter how many of you ask for a reload. But given that it's arguably the best projectile in the game, it's great for both combos and neutral, and enhances his gun throw special, I would say that's pretty fair. Now, he does have to enter a stance to use it, but he can do a lot out of that stance, including being given access to a unique super, which shoots a bullet without needing ammo because fuck you. He also has lightning slash, which is just judgment cut. That's, that's what it is. It's fucking judgment cut. It's freely aimable in combos, making it painfully easy to chain into, and was apparently nerfed to not be aimable in neutral. I can only imagine why. Then there's Lasso, a command grab with a multitude of uses from repositioning combos to resetting the opponent in an unfavorable position. And of course, his teleports, all of which come in different flavors. Normal teleport is a general use tele that can be used in combos, but has a longer startup and recovery than his instant teleport which is a roided up version of normal teleport that requires a bar of meter. In exchange, it executes and recovers far faster. Foresight teleport requires you to set up a teleport point ahead of time, but allows you to teleport and attack at the same time, and the foresight can be detonated as an alternate attack. And lastly, spot teleport acts basically like a spot dodge. His teleports are fantastic tools for DI chasing and combos, as well as general maneuver fuckery. Overall, Cowboy is great for those who want to take their opponents to the Ram Ranch. If you're like me and aim to keep your friends list as empty as possible, then you just might be interested in the wizard. Armed with a dozen spells and nary a pointy hat to be seen, this mage is the closest thing that you'll get to a zoner in Yomi. During my time with him, I noticed two big weaknesses. The first is that he really likes meter, so I hope you like to burn that shit. Second, up close his attacks are either short ranged or slow, meaning that the moment a ninja is in their bubble, they're more than likely going Going to end up having their face rearranged. Now, he does have a few trump cards up his robe, like a slash that, while painfully slow, has hyper armor on it, but for the most part, he's kinda at the mercy of everyone else should they get in. Unfortunately for his opponents, though, Wizard doesn't exactly let you do that easily. Wizard has, arguably, the most control over his attacks out of anyone else in the roster. He's able to aim a good chunk of his tools, and combined with their range, it gives him some very good DI chasing capabilities, not to mention solid neutral control. He also has some pretty damn fast dashes along with a fast fall. When given the chance to play, Wizard is an absolute degenerate. He's <laughs> kind of an asshole, and I love him. Some of his unique features include Flame Wave and Geyser, two attacks with the coverage of a fucking football stadium, Magic Dart, a spammable homing projectile that he can control the angle and speed of, Gust and Zephyr, which let him influence the knockback of his opponents and projectiles, Spark Bomb, a massive lingering projectile that just denies space and can extend combos, Hover, which allows him to stay in the air and execute some nasty ass combos or simply stay out of reach, and my favorite, the motherfucking orb. A super that summons an entity that Wizard can control the movement of that will attack alongside him. It can also be used as a movement option by either teleporting to it or tethering to it. All this at the expense of the orb constantly draining the wizard's meter. Wizard is the closest thing to a boss character in Yomi, and because my ego needs constant reassurance, he's the perfect character for me. Question. Have you ever wanted to be basically every single fucking grappler slash juggernaut character ever, but you can never figure out how to hold five different controllers at the same time? Well, boy, do I have good news for you. The robot is the slow but devastating bruiser of the roster. Armed with hyper armor, long range, and buttons that hurt all on their own, even without combos, if you're a fan of bully type characters who get in with sheer force, you might be a fan of Scott Cawthon here. Is that the bite? Robot has a number of interesting tools at his disposal. He has by far the most grabs out of anyone in the cast, including one that's a super, plus his normal grab is fantastic. And while it is true that his movement is slow, he certainly isn't lacking in movement options. In fact, Robot has taken a page out of the wizard's book of all characters, and has his own strange version of Hover, which opens up his combo routes and helps his otherwise mediocre air game. He's also unique in that his hyper armor is tied to a gauge. Once he uses a move with armor, the gauge gets consumed, and it must regenerate before he can use armor again. But here's the kicker. He can apply armor to just about all of his moves. Yeah, 
You know how in most fighters, armor is hard-coded to only appear on certain attacks? Robot can get armor on most of his attacks. This results in silly mind game potential and can allow Robot to get away with some pretty heinous things. As even if he doesn't use his armor on certain attacks, the mere threat of him using it might cause some opponents to just let Robot have the stage. He also has an interesting passive effect too. If he lands from a far enough height, he will cause an arena-wide ground hitbox. The harder he hits the ground and the closer he is to the target, the more damage the shockwave does and the greater the launch. Robot's more unique features include Drive, a transformation because yes, he's a fucking transformer that offers a unique method of movement, pressure, and combos. Bounce Check, which is... Broly's Lariat Express, that's, that's just what it is, except this time it's a grab! Flamethrower, which leaves a pull of flame on the floor that deals damage over time. Magnetize, which draws opponents in towards Robot because magnets. Loik, an orbital laser precision fuck you! And the almighty kill process, an anti-air grab that does more damage depending on the amount of meter that Robot has. With max bars, it can even insta-kill if you land it raw. Robot is for people who like Transformers. So, literally everyone. You are, and this is true, legally obligated to either enjoy playing Robot or getting your face turned into jelly by Robot. Yomi Hustle is fucking great, but it's also surprisingly accessible. I mean, outside of the critical lack in detailed information about the game mechanics. And what's funny is that because of how Yomi plays, it almost completely eliminates some of the biggest hurdles that newbies to the genre of fighting games would otherwise have to struggle with. Of all the problems that fighting games have when trying to get new people on board, there are two that stick out in particular. The first one is execution barriers. So everyone flubs execution at some point or another. So either you fat finger a button, or you time your input wrong, or you simply mess up the motion. It happens to everyone, but newbies are the ones that suffer from this problem the most. Having to figure out execution while at the same time fighting someone is not exactly fun for a lot of people. But because Yomi Hustle pauses time for each fucking action, and even shows you previews of what could possibly happen next turn, execution failures aren't nearly as much of a problem here. Now, yeah, errors in judgment still exist, but you ain't gonna be fucking up a DP motion in Yomi Hustle. The second problem that newbies have to deal with is them getting their asshole shoved in over and over with little that they can do about it than to just watch. So, time for a story, class. For a laugh, I got a friend of mine a copy of Dragon Ball Fighters on the PC. And whilst I'm already comfortable with the genre of fighting games, having gotten into them around the late 2000s, my friend here, well, the closest that he ever got was Smash Brothers. Anyway, we play a few games, and at one point, I get him into the corner with my main, Nappa. A character who is infamous for being an absolute nightmare to deal with if you're stuck in the corner against him. And this is a problem for even experienced players to deal with. So when this happened, and he subsequently got stuck in the corner for about, like, two minutes, he spoke a sentence to me that has stuck in my head for a good two or so years now. You know, at some point, it just stops being fun. And you know, he's right. Like, yeah, you could argue that that's just part of fighting games, and I actually 100% agree with you, but it's also kind of inarguable that this factor is one of the biggest reasons why people can't get into the genre. Like, sure, DBFZ has a fair number of defensive tools, but here's the thing. All of them can't be used when you're already getting mauled, which is often the case for a lot of newbies. But Yomi Hustle's directional influence mechanic means that you will always have some sort of control and ways to fight against your opponent's combo. It just feels nice knowing that you can do something, and not having that something locked behind using a resource. Making both sides of a combo more interactive is better for everyone. So, thank you Ivy, for this completely original mechanic that you invented. Alright, video's long, so this wrap-up's gonna be quick. In closing, Yomi Hustle makes my balls explode with nostalgia, happiness, and glee. So long as I don't run into a wizard mirror. Buy the game. Right now. Lest I shower upon ye all of the spark bombs that I can conjure.